This is Visitor's Book and I'm Maya, your host. In this program, we're going to be meeting with diplomats and foreigners who are here in Pakistan and we're going to find out what they really think about the country. Let's go. So today we're here in the Jasmine and Rose Gardens of Islamabad and we're meeting with a German travel vlogger, Christian Betzmann, and he should be waiting for us somewhere here. So let's go find him. Hi. Hey, Chris. How are you? Good, how are you? Very good, nice thank you. Nice to see you here. So, how long has it been for you now in Pakistan? Uh, it's been two months now. Wow. Time goes fast, yeah. What made you want to come here? Um, so, originally my plan wasn't to come here. I was planning an India and uh, Sri Lanka trip. Uh -huh. But then I watched a couple of my friends' videos about Pakistan, about the north, about the people, and it really inspired me to come here and see it for myself, so. Really? So, you were already in India when you saw the videos? Uh, I was in India before. Okay. I was traveling around. Yeah. And then I saw videos about Lahore, I saw videos about Hunza. Wow. And it got me really hooked to come here really? and see it for myself. Yeah. What, what was it about the videos? Like, was it the people you saw in the videos or just the scenery? What? It was the people and the north and Ooh. the beaches in Karachi. And oh. the whole package was really interested me in uh, coming to... See for yourself. Yes. Great. And um, what was your idea about Pakistan before you saw those videos, before you came here? What did you think about the country? Yeah, you know how the media is. Yeah. And so actually I thought it's very similar to like Syria, Afghanistan, you know, there's like desert, rock houses and military everywhere, you know, but I was really surprised when I did my first trip to Hunza. Yeah. How green it is, how amazing the landscapes are and how nice the people are. So. I was really shocked, positively. Yeah. Did you think security would be a problem before you came here? Uh, not really, because I've been to a lot of countries and I don't believe the media in that case. Mm -hmm. I trust my friends' opinions, so I never really was worried about anything. Obviously, you're cautious yeah. when you travel, but uh, I never had a bad experience so far, so. Yeah. So your experience here has obviously been pretty great then because you're Very planning good. on staying longer. Is yeah, that right? so I was originally leaving last month. Oh yeah? And then I made a couple of plans with uh, other YouTubers mm -hmm. and now I'm going to stay longer. I've got a three month visa extension. So okay. yeah. Great. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about like what is it exactly that you do? I mean you started a YouTube channel quite yes. recently but before that you were mainly active on Instagram, is that right? Yes, so I've been traveling for seven years. Mm -hmm. um, I've left after my graduation and I've left to Australia to do the working holidays. So I was working, earning money and traveling mm -hmm. and I kept this for the past seven years. So I've been traveling a lot in Asia, I've been to over 30 countries. Amazing. And yes, yeah, so recently I've started my YouTube channel. Yeah. I've started on Instagram two years ago mm -hmm. with photography and and then I got really hooked on Instagram stories and me being in front of camera so I've started this channel here and it's going really well. Yeah. So if you guys want to check out my videos go on Betsman channel, that's my surname. Great. And I'm going to post all my stuff on there, all my travel experience in Pakistan. Awesome. And um, how many followers do you have right now? Uh, 40,000 already wow, in four weeks. Odd. Yeah. It's do you get recognized when you walk around here yeah, in a lot. Islamabad? I'm, uh, I make videos with Shavi Jeffrey. He's also a uh -huh. very popular vlogger. Yeah. And so we are together all the time. So I get recognized by his vlogs, by my vlogs. Okay, so, so you like do vlogs together. Yes, yeah, so well. we have a team right now in Lahore. That's where I'm based and yeah. we're going to plan lots of funny vlogs. Oh, okay. Together. So you're living in Lahore and not in Islamabad actually. Yes, right I'm living now. in Lahore. I'm based in Lahore right now. Uh -huh. But I'm going to, through the year and next year, I'm going to travel lots of places in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I want to see all, I want to see as much as I can yeah. and experience as much as I can. And yeah. How would you compare Islamabad and Lahore? Islamabad is very green and coordinated mm. and Lahore is a mess. Okay. But a beautiful mess. <laughs> yes. That it's it very is. rich in culture, it's very, there's a lot of to, to do for tourists. Mm -hmm. I made a video about that as well, what to do. Yeah. Islamabad is more for me to relax. Get so away from the chaos of Lahore. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so how many times have you been to Islamabad now? Three times already. Okay, how, have you spent a lot of time here? Um, I mean, a couple of days a couple always. Of days, yeah. Yes. Okay. But I've seen most of the places around here. Yeah and uh, it's really nice. Did it surprise you as well? Like, was it totally different to what you thought? Yes, because it's a capital, right? Yeah. So I was expecting, usually the capitals are really crazy. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't expect it to have 
no, almost no traffic and green and organized streets. I was really surprised about the streets, yeah. how they're so well maintained. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and I've noticed there is a lot of like uh, Western travel bloggers coming to Pakistan right now. Why do you think that is? It's because of social media. Yeah. I mean, I have 40,000 followers. I get recognized every day. Mm. You see the reach. It's a 200 million people country and still people, you know, with this kind of amount. So if you get really big names into this country mm -hmm. and you know, you know how fast things spreading on social media. So okay. that can help huh. to improve the tourism of this country. So you think like uh, the exposure that you get in Pakistan as a Western travel blogger is something that maybe people yeah, come here for? for. Sure. Yeah. The foreigner, the Gora, yeah. the, the has a high value, in my opinion. Mm. Because if I like the Pakistani food, that's way more valuable if a Pakistani like their food. Yeah, that's funny. You know, because they also want to, people want to promote the country in a positive light. Mm. So, yeah. and I mean, it's probably because, like you mentioned, the negative media coverage, it's a nice kind of a counter narrative to that. Definitely. Yeah. You mentioned you've been to India as well. How is traveling in Pakistan different from India? I mean, they're pretty similar countries. It's very similar. Yeah. I would say the difference is the amount of people. Yes. You know, India has a really large population around six times. So everything is accordingly six times more traffic. Yeah. There's a lot of more <laughs> po uh, pollution. Mm. But in all in all, it's really similar. I'm experiencing very nice people. The people are really friendly towards tourists and they want to show the positive light of the country. And um, one of the reasons I like Pakistan more is actually there's people, they don't rip you off. Yeah. They do the opposite. I got lots of free stuff in Pakistan. Oh, yeah? I wouldn't say everything is free, but there's a lot of, even some Uber drivers, they give me free rides oh, because wow. I'm a foreigner. Yeah. And they, more in, yeah. in other Southeast Asian countries, um, you get ripped off as a foreigner mm. because, so it's like the opposite I experience here. Mm, yeah. Which is really They're nice to be. probably so happy to see yeah. tourists here. So you mentioned the north, you've obviously been there. Where, where exactly? I mean, Hunza, you've I've been seen? to Naran, Gilgit, uh -huh. Hunza. Wow. I've, I haven't made it to the Chinese border because it was closed when I was there. Okay. But yeah, it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And what I was missing there is like these tours, you know, these hotspots where everyone goes to take a photo. Okay. You know, yeah. what I was missing is the accessibility of many places, mm -hmm. which is still quite hard because the roads are bad. I've been to... Um, like Saifu Muluk in Iran, which oh, is yeah, really nice. It's beautiful, but yeah. For all of you who've been there, it's really hard to get up there. Mm. You have to take a jeep. Yeah. You know? So once we make this easier for people, you know people are lazy and yeah. comfort. Exactly. So in the end, we want people to, for everyone to be accessible. And then you will have more tourists over there. Mm. And where else have you been? You've seen obviously Lahore, Islamabad. Have I've, you seen Karachi? I've been to, no, I have been to Peshawar, mm -hmm. which was really nice. Made a video over there and I've heard it was really bad before, but I experienced only nice people, so I don't know where that's coming from. Like, people are really nice there. I've been to Multan. Oh, wow. I've filmed uh, the shrines there, which was really nice. And I've been to the cities, Lahore, Islamabad. Yeah. So far. Yeah. What was your favorite city or region that you visited? Um, I would say for cultural, it's Lahore. Yeah. For cultural, for adventure so far. For nature, it's been Hunza. There's a lot of things to do, and um, I really want to go to Skardu as well. Yeah. And maybe for uh, for my future trip, it's going to be Karachi. Okay. Where I want to spend a few uh, a few weeks there. Yeah, you have to see the biggest city, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be chaotic. <laughs> yeah, but I like that, you know. Yeah, you do. It's, yeah, it's for a short time. It's nice yeah. for my videos. It's adventure. It's like interacting with people, and you really feel Pakistan. Like I felt you feel Pakistan more in Lahore than in Islamabad because in Islamabad it's, Absolutely, yeah. it could also be another city somewhere else. In, in the West. Yes. Yeah, easily. Exactly. That's true. So what did you like the most, like let's say about Lahore? What is it? I mean, is it the architecture? Is it the people? It's the things to do, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, while there's not too much to do in Islamabad, I, I would say in Lahore there's a lot of things to do for, um, for day activities, you know, and there's a lot of different kind of people. You have the modern parts, you have the old Lahore, so there's lots to do for everyone. Hmm. What's your favorite place in Lahore? Old Lahore. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. I mean, for a day it's fine, I would not live there. Yeah. It's too chaotic, <laughs> but it's definitely nice for 
to explore the streets, the small streets. Do people stop food. you a lot there? Yeah, <laughs> foreign abonos. <laughs> they course. want to take a photo. And it's really surprising for me how everyone wants to show the positive image. Like mm -hmm. every Uber driver asks me, how do you like Pakistan? Like people really care about the country. Yeah. Well, this has never happened in India or in other countries in Asia. Oh, really? They don't ask you? No, like, they're not really. Questions? They ask you where have you been? What have you? Do, what are you doing? But mm. they're not really interested in like showing a positive image right. through them, through their behavior. That's why I feel like people here are so hospital. Yeah. People here are really. They want to make sure their food tastes good for you. Their service is good for you. So it's interesting. Have you been invited to people's homes? Yes, randomly? from Instagram, people invite me to the house all the really? time. Have I've you been, gone? Yeah, to a couple of people. Oh. Um, when they do like the similar like photography, you know, so I know at least oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. there's like a mutual. So yeah, I've been to people's houses, had dinner with them. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For example, when you're in Lahore, where do you stay? Do you stay with somebody you know or in a hotel? So, How does it work? Yeah, so I first stayed in hotels. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm a full time traveler, so it's not gonna be a five star hotel, but mm -hmm. it's still there. I have really nice, affordable guest houses there. And then when I'm at Chavir, now we're having the house, so I don't have to worry about sweeping places or switching places all the time. Okay. So yeah, we stay together in, um, in a nice area in Lahore. And when I'm going to other places, I'm either collaborating with people on Instagram. Right or I'm staying at friends' friends' houses. Okay, and so that's I'm, how you got to know them, through Instagram? Yes, all through social media. And they just contacted you and they're like, oh, you're coming to Pakistan, or yeah. how, how did it happen? So social media is, the beauty of social media is uh, we all do the same thing. Yeah. You know, either photography or video, so mm -hmm. it's really easy to get along. Okay, so and there's like a little community of travel yes. vloggers. Exactly, so you know, once people do the same, it's especially for people in Pakistan. It's mm. interesting to have a foreigner with them. You know, we do collaborations, photo shoots. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm really open like that. I, I'm staying at people's houses. That's so cool. And it's a good experience always. And then when you travel around the country, how do you do that? Do you always go with a local or do you go alone? No, or? I go by myself. Oh yeah? I'm just booking a bus, hmm. for example, to go to different cities. And Seriously? Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, you, you, you took a bus to the north as well or you flew? Um, I was with a tour company, so we had a van. Yeah. And on the way back we flew. Okay. It's too long. Yeah, yeah to, to that, that is, that is hours. very long. <laughs> but yeah, the, I mean, it's, you should definitely see it one time. Mm. All these uh, local villages are very nice to see, all these mountains. It's yeah. very beautiful. But um, it is quite long. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so. And I noticed that I was watching a couple of your videos and you, you've you had like a couple of Pakistanis featured there also. Like how, yes. I mean, and now you've gotten to know all these bloggers and so what, what's your like um, perception of Pakistanis? Like how, were they the way you expected them to be or did, um, it, did it surprise so you? I realized that there's a small circle in Pakistan mm -hmm. for let's say the higher the class people or people elite, that do yeah. social media. There's not too many vloggers, there's not, not too many photographers, you know, like in the US or in Europe. Yeah. So the this, this circle is small. So once you know some people, you know everyone basically. Yeah, exactly. You know, what I really was um, impressed by is the differences in mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go more to the rural areas and the culture areas, people are really, they're really um, traditional mm -hmm. and also their mindset is that way yeah. compared to people who are, you know, more in the higher class, traveled it around, traveled around the world. These people have a different mindset, a more open mindset. Yeah, exactly. Because I don't think some village people would let me stay in the house, for example. Yeah, you think well, so? I don't know. Maybe you should try. I'll, I'm going to find that out. That's another video idea I have for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so these people are more open-minded to meet people through internet. And of course, yeah. I mean, they the have same, the access. We are more on the same yeah. level in thinking. So it's it's actually... It's the education, yeah. It's it's the same than meeting some people in Australia or Germany. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I think the language barrier is also not there. So it's easy to communicate. Exactly. I'm really English. surprised people speak really good English here, mm. which is crazy. I would never expect that. People in India speak also good English. Yeah, because of the colonial history. Yes, yeah. but um, yeah, I'm really surprised. Even in old Lahore, people can understand me. Yeah, exactly. And, um, they have at least some words they can speak. Yeah, so it's so, very easy for yeah, you to really communicate easy. with people. And it makes traveling easier. Absolutely. While other countries in Asia, it's quite hard. 
mm. and so it's hard to get around. It's hard to find the bus. It's hard to find yeah. the hotel if nobody can yeah, communicate exactly. with you. Yeah, you know? So yeah, so that's that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned you're going to stay here till the end of the year at least, right? Yeah, I'm going to stay a couple of months. What convinced you to do that? I mean, you said you were not like that was not your plan originally. So. My friend Xavi and I, we have a team right now. We have a team, uh, some of his friends, and we're going to make a team in Lahore where we're going to do vlogs together. We're okay. going to make videos. We're going to travel the country. Mm -hmm. We're going to help promoting tourism. To no, We don't have to do it directly, but people see my experience. It's good. Exactly. So that's automatically promoting tourism. Yeah. You know? So, and that's a plan to travel around the country, visit more places, make videos together. Mm. And I'll see if I stay. Two months, two years, I don't know yet. Oh, wow. I'm very open. <laughs> so I will see where the flow goes. I'm going with the flow. Yeah, what do you think? Should we go take a little walk? Sure. Let's do it. Let's go. We're going to take a short break. I'll see you after a while. Welcome back. I'm here with German travel vlogger Christian Betzmann, and we're ready to take a little walk. Yeah, Let's go. sure. <laughs> So you mentioned that you like to participate in all kinds of volunteer projects whenever you go to a new country. What gave you this idea? Yeah, so I've started this a couple of years ago when I was uh, traveling through Thailand. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends, she told me this is an amazing project where you can live in a village in Thailand and teach these kids English. So I've done it and oh, it's wow. since then I, I like to participate in these kind of projects to give back for all the good things I get on my travels for these oh, people, you know, so nice. yeah, and I've done that in Thailand, in the Philippines, in India, and even in Lahore, I went to a project, so oh, yeah. it was so much fun, and I can really encourage everyone to do it, give back, and you actually get much more in, in, in return. return, you yeah. learn a lot, you learn about people's culture, you, you see happy kids, you know, and it's always good to share your ideas and your values from other countries when you know when you're in these areas yeah, where people don't have access to too much education exactly. you know so yeah what was this project called in Lahore uh, the newer project yeah. and it's a project run by a family it's a family business and so basically what they do they have an orphanage and they provide people from over 30 villages they give them access to food, mm -hmm. they train them for six months, and then they help them to find a job. Amazing. So wow. that's a part from the school. They have a run a school for, um, mm -hmm. for all these children of these people. And it's a really nice project, so I'm definitely gonna go back there and uh, make a video about them. I already start filming. Great. And so, yeah, that's in Lahore. That's not too far from our house. And so... So that's like, how, how did you get to know about them? Uh, social media okay they contacted yeah, me <laughs> and so yeah when they reached out I went there and um, it's great to see it's a very organized project mm -hmm. like I've been to some in other countries they're not very organized so yeah. this one runs really well mm -hmm. and it gives people a chance to you know achieve something later yeah wow how many kids are there uh, over 200 Wow, 200 that's a children, lot. yes. And they're all orphans. And there's uh, orphans as well. I don't know, a couple, 50, 60 mm -hmm. orphans. And in the school, they have over 200 children. Wow, and, and they're, they're all from like underprivileged backgrounds. Yes, so they're mostly from these families. They are coming to the project to seek help. Mm -hmm. And um, these children, they just get a chance to go to school there. Wow. And did you get to have any conversations with the kids there? Yeah, yeah, I was in their school. What I did was you doing do? some classes, like some funny things. Oh, and, what, what did you teach them? Oh, uh, just I just asked them like simple questions in English, mm -hmm. uh, math, and just had an overview of the yeah of the property. They must have which been so really excited nice. to meet yeah, you. Yeah, they're really nice. Especially the kids at the orphans. They yeah. were really fun, and uh, <laughs> the English was really good. I was yeah. very surprised. So yeah. Great. And so you've done this in other countries as well. You mentioned Thailand, you did some yes, kind of a project. Thailand. You were teaching English to monks, right? In Thailand, I was for three months, actually. Okay. So that was the first project. I've stayed for three oh. months before oh. I moved to Bangkok. Okay. And yeah, I was teaching English, sports, and it was just an exchange of, you know, I was just getting a cultural experience living yeah, at the property. Exactly. There were other people from other countries yeah. as well. So it was like a cool community. Hmm. And it's interesting, this system works like you you work 
work, you teach English or there's a lot of other options as well and you get free accommodation and uh, food exactly. in return. Yeah, and, and you learn a lot All these good yourself. experiences and all these good memories. Mm. It was a really nice time. What do you think it adds to your trip? Like, could you imagine going somewhere and not volunteering somewhere? Is it such an important thing for you to always uh, do Yeah, for me it's important. I want always my videos to be giving back to people, mm -hmm. like, you know, like providing a value for people to watch my videos yeah. instead of just uh, showing things, you know, I want to exactly. provide the value and helping is always, I like to help people, so. Yeah, I think that's not as common, like among travel vloggers and exactly. vloggers. I think that's something new you've started doing. Exactly, yeah? so it's always for me, it's like travel with a responsibility, you know, travel with a purpose. Yeah. Because what I've seen in Thailand is over the years, the tourism, is destroying the country. Yeah. You know, the mass tourism is destroying the country in a, in a, like they had already to close Maya Bay, which is one of the most popular tourist attractions mm. because they could not handle the people. Right, there were too many and people. Basically. Yes, so instead of focusing on these tourist spots, I want to focus on the local areas, you know, what's really important about the country. Yeah. And, and you so want to get like sort of off the beaten track as well. Yes, that, right? exactly. So yeah. I want people to see the real Thailand or the real Pakistan yeah. rather than just focusing on the you tourist, know, sites. tourist spots. Like, OK, exactly. you can go to Taj Mahal, but if you really go to a village in India, you learn more about the culture Absolutely. and the people. Absolutely. That's so true. And you've you've traveled to 30 different countries. Exactly. Which one was your favorite so far? Uh, my favorite was Australia. Yeah. Um, I've lived there for three years mm -hmm. and it's just, it's a continent, it's a country, it's so diverse, there's so many things to do and the people are awesome. Yeah. But Pakistan so far is one of my favorite, like top two in Asia. Why is that? It's because it's, you're welcome here mm -hmm. and you get respected as a tourist and in a lot of other countries in Asia you get abused. Okay. Not from everyone, but you get abused in the form of you're the white tourist, you have money. We're mm. gonna take advantage of that, you know? Mm. So people mm. are not honest all the time. Yeah. You know, not everyone, but people are not honest and they, you know, whenever you buy something, they're gonna overcharge you. And I never had the feeling yeah. here. I think it's like a tourism industry which causes these things in any country. Like yeah. there's so many tourists and all kinds of different kind of side whatever phenomena, whatever you want to call it, they develop on the side and it's not always such a good thing. No, so that's why yeah. I really value Pakistan in that way because yeah. it's just amazing to see how people care about you here, you know? Yeah, And I'm exactly. maybe lucky to be a foreigner, but it, yeah, very. it definitely <laughs> makes my travel easier. It's definitely so. a privilege yeah. here. Yeah, absolutely. But as long as you're aware of it, I think it's, it's I mean, of course, you know that it's so much more easier for us as foreigners to do many things here in yeah. the country than it is maybe for certain Pakistanis. Have Exa you have exactly. you noticed any difference between the Pakistani vloggers or YouTubers in the way that are, are they um, treated the same way as you or do yeah, they I feel have a harder like, time sometimes? Yeah, I feel like we have the privilege, you know, we can do certain things they can't do because of culture and religion. Yeah. So we can get away sometimes. with it easier, you know, while they have to always feel that someone is watching them, you know. Mm. And if they do this, people will judge them while nobody will judge us because we come yeah. from a different background. Yeah, so we don't know in our what country, we're doing it's, anyway. It's normal. You know, exactly. We can just walk around, have a drink, swear, yeah. and people will not judge us the way they probably yeah. would judge a Pakistani. So that's very true. And you mentioned that you've also given a talk at a university here. What yeah. was that all about? I've got invited to the GK in University near Peshawar. Oh wow! And it was. Not my first talk, but it was my first university in, in Pakistan and it was a great experience. Um, I spoke about my travels, I got Shavi as a surprise guest. Yeah. And yeah, it was fun to, okay. to talk to all these students who are, you know, who need inspiration once they finish their studies. Many of them want to go overseas. Oh, is it? Okay, and so it's, how did they in, actually invite you? Like, what was the purpose? Um, to talk about my travel experience, yeah, how that was, okay. blogging can connect social huh. and that's also the reason I'm invited for a TEDx talk oh, is it? in the next coming weeks, yeah. Here and, in Islamabad or and, in, uh, in Lahore? Oh, how exciting. Yeah, and it's also huh. about people and how vlogging can connect 
different countries and cultures mm -hmm. and bring them together, you know, so yeah. Wow, how exciting. How old were you when you left Germany, actually? Uh, 21. Okay, and since then you've lived abroad? Yes, so I've lived in four different continents and yeah, I've been doing jobs hmm. to finance my trips and instead of spending it on uh, on useless things or you know materialistic things I spend it on my travels yeah. and I spend it with a purpose and yeah nowadays with social media this is a kind of business I want to grow so I'm investing in that yeah. in my travels and yeah you think you're gonna continue to do this for the rest of your life I don't know where the past will lead me but <laughs> I will definitely will travel and make more content yeah and we will see what did you do before you started traveling? You were a student or did, uh, you, did you do something else? I was studying marketing in? management uh -huh, uh -huh. and I was working for a while yeah. and then I just got... You got sick of it? Not satisfied with the life in Germany so mm -hmm. I decided to change it and I encourage that to all people in Pakistan or wherever they are you know don't be stuck in a bubble mm. don't live the life your parents want you to be you know I know it's hard here but mm. break out and do your own thing yeah. and that's what I did and I'm super happy now that's so, excellent. Yeah. Great. How long did it take for you to like, I don't know, get followers? I mean, you can't just one day decide like, okay, yeah, I want to yeah. do this for a living. How did you get started on that? Actually interesting, I'm a late starter on Instagram. Yeah. I've never used Instagram around like uh, before two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was in Cambodia, I remember, and these two girls in my hostel, they decided, oh, Chris, you take nice photos. Mm -hmm. Why don't you use Inst post them on Instagram? I was like, what is Instagram? I oh, use you Facebook. Didn't even know, yeah. So, and then Wasn't it was interesting. Uh, I've just tried it out. I obviously made all the mistake. I uploaded all my photos at once. Yeah. <laughs> but people start liking it. And then it took around another year until I took it seriously. So my advice is just be consistent with your content. Be real. Don't mm -hmm. fake people. Don't copy things, you know. Yeah. And I've used to upload almost every day on Instagram. Really? It takes time to shoot the photo. It takes time to edit the photo a couple of, of hours. So yeah. it's not it doesn't come overnight, you know, and mm -hmm. you have to put a lot of work and effort in, but it's worth it because I get a lot of messages from people all over the world. They get inspired to go to Thailand. Yeah. They have done this because of the scene, my photos, and it's it's nice, you know, it's very, very rewarding. Cool. Yeah. So, How much thought do you put into like the photos that you take? I mean, like what, what kind of stuff do you take photos of? Um, so I take photos of different landscapes or mm -hmm. cool places around the world I want to show. Yeah. And I'm mostly in the place, in the photos, so I want to oh, show... Oh, that's difficult, because if you travel alone, exactly. you have to find somebody else to take that photo for you, right? Yes, and that's How does that work? usually <laughs> very hard. So I literally have to put the camera and then they just press the button and then the rest is going to be editing. Okay, so I see. It's pretty interesting, but it's manageable, you know. I wish I could travel with someone who's... Good yeah, in your the personal field. photographer. Yes. That would make things That's easier. That's in the make. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Yes. And Good. Yeah. Yeah. And um, how long did it take for you to actually start making money off of traveling? I mean, that's also something that doesn't come automatically, obviously. So people always think that you need the million followers to make money or to work with brands. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I had around 30,000 followers before I even tried to reach out to brands. And then I was like, let's just do it. Yeah. Go for it. So I sent some emails and good, got good response. Okay. And then you just have to put in 110%, you know, to get yeah. to get to the next door, which opens for you. Mm. And so there's a lot of ways you can make money on social media. Mm. Uh, you can do branded photos, you can do branded videos, you can do video editing. Yeah. And so actually money I've started making probably six months ago. Okay, so it hasn't been that long. When I was in Thailand yeah. and I decided to travel, um, I was working there and I did my social media part-time and then this started to pick up so I got lots of jobs yeah. and good money so I was like if I do that full-time I would probably make more money than I would do with my job okay and it's just you have a hundred percent day yeah. you have a hundred percent time of the day to put into one thing mm -hmm. which is the only re way you can grow something you know yeah. so now I want to do the same with my YouTube channel I'm gonna put in lots of effort that's amazing. I mean, you managed to make the followership grow so quickly. Yes, That's and the views impressive. are good. Yeah. So the YouTube money is not the main income. Mm. Obviously, it's a bit lower in these countries here. But yeah, um, yeah there's a lot of potential. 
especially as a foreigner in Pakistan, so I'm gonna take my chances. And nowadays you just don't really even have to reach out to the brands and sponsors, they contact you directly. Since the uh, past couple of weeks, um, I get lots and lots more emails. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to do as many things as possible, you know, and I recommend that to everyone who wants to do this kind of business. Everyone has to know you. Yeah. You have to get in contact with everyone, so it's really helpful to have an open personality. Yeah. Meet a lot of people and then more things will come. Hmm. So I'm trying to use, go through all the doors that open for me right now. And right. the money will come in the end, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've got some savings. I don't have to rely on this right now. Yeah, that also but, makes it easier, um, right? I like what I'm doing and if people like what I'm doing, if people like what they're doing, the money and success will come automatically. That's hmm. what I believe in and so far it's paying out. It's working out, yes. great. How long do you usually spend in one country that you travel to? Uh, usually I spend at least a week. Okay. Uh, one or two weeks because I want to get the full impression of the country. Mm. I don't believe that if you go to Kuala Lumpur, you've seen Malaysia. Of course, you yeah. Know? Especially that most capital cities are very westernized. Yes. So I usually go off the beaten track. I usually spend time in rural areas to learn about the country. Yes. And if I really like it, I'll just stay longer like I'm doing right now in Pakistan. Yeah. So. That sounds really nice. Yes. <laughs> Do you get to go home ever? <laughs> uh, I'm usually, oh, yeah, usually once, a, usually once a year. Once a I'm year going only. home. Okay. And then once I'm sick of my family, I'm just leaving. <laughs> because wow. you feel like you haven't left, even if you haven't seen them for 16 months. I, really? Because it feels like you come days, back to old habits, but yeah. the way you come back is you're already, you're already developed and you changed in personality and you feel like you're going back to old Interesting. habits. You don't really want to, like, you're already another level right now. Yeah. Going back to an old routine, you don't want to live that life. What do you think if we go somewhere to find something to eat? Yes. Getting that hungry? Would be awesome, yes. Okay, great. We're going to take a short break. I'll see you when we come back. Welcome back. I'm here with German travel vlogger Christian Betzmann, and we've just ordered some food. Ready to eat? Oh yes. Hungry? Yeah, oh yes. <laughs> so when you go to a new country, how much research do you usually do before you go to there or you just basically show up somewhere? Uh, no, I always plan things out. I don't like to over plan, but at least I have like a, a guide, a guideline of which places I want to see. Right. Because otherwise you arrive there and you don't know what to do and then you have it's a bad chaos. Wi-Fi and you know yeah. and you have and sometimes no connection. So I do my research first about places online. Yeah. And, and you decide where you want to go and exactly. how you're gonna do it and okay. Exactly. How so much time do you spend on that regular? An hour? Maybe oh, that's more. Not, that's not I a look lot. on uh, Instagram of different photo places okay. where to shoot. Right. So I have an idea already instead of figuring that out on the spot. Yeah because if you shoot on sunrise or sunset, you only have limited time. Exactly. Know? So I don't want to end up just uh, walking, running around mm. and looking for the spots. I'll get my idea before online. So I'll do my research. How strict is your schedule when you get to a new country or like traveling every day from one place to the next or you like to um, hang out in, in different places for a longer time? I usually pressure myself a lot yeah. that I have to see everything, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm like when I have a week or two, I'm quite busy all the time. I would never sleep in like till 12 p.m. Oh, really? No, no, no. So I'm quite strict um, with where I move, but I also want to enjoy my time. You know? Yeah, I don't want to rush around and, um, you know, just I would like to enjoy the moment, mm. but I usually travel quite a lot to yeah. different places in short time. And how many hours a day do you work then? Work? Yeah. All day. All the time. I mean, I don't consider it as work because I like to do it, but yeah, you have to travel somewhere to take the shots. Exactly. You go home, you have to edit it, you have to publish it, you know, that takes all day. Yeah. Instagram, emails, photo shots, Instagram all the stories. Time. Yeah. And it's a full time thing, you know, it's mm. not like you can do it for a week and then you have a week break it's like all day every day exactly and how much do you follow other travel bloggers or vloggers for ideas or do you just try to kind of i don't know if people even read like lonely planet these days anymore i don't think <laughs> not so not at all yeah um i don't try to i'm since i'm doing this youtube i'm not watching too many creators anymore mm -hmm. um, i'm getting some ideas by browsing youtube see what's already been done 
and but, you want to always um, do something different you want to add to exactly it. Yeah. add my own thing you know yeah. but the the thing is is just there's not much time left to watch youtube videos you know there's always things to do yeah and you have to plan ahead you have to plan uh get brand deals, you have to reach out to people, go in meetings, uh, travel to different places. There's not too much time to just sit down and watch Netflix. Exactly. And do other things, you know, so you really have to, yeah. Wow. And how did you decide which places in Pakistan to visit? I mean, you just went, you were watching other people's vlogs, basically. Recommendations yeah. of my friends. Okay. Um, watching other creators I follow right now or I've met. Mm. And just places I get recommended on Instagram as well. I'm going to check them out if I like it. If I have any video ideas, I'm going there. And yeah. Look at that. Thank you. Pakistani burger. Wow. <laughs> have you had the chance to try any Pakistani street food here? Yeah, I've tried a lot. What have you tried? Um, I'm really bad with names. Okay. <laughs> but I've tried a, um, a lot of barbecue. I like barbecue. I've okay. Tried. I'm trying to stay clean on my diet, you know. Okay. So I've tried a couple of things in Old Lahore. Mm -hmm. A couple of sweets. Oh yes, I think I saw that one vlog that you posted from Multan. Yes. Right? <laughs> and I am always up. I'm going to do a food vlog in Lahore. Oh, amazing. That's the best place. And I'm going to try some crazy food. And um, how important do you think like tasting local foods is when you go travel to a new country? Um, I think it's important. Um, I don't like when people go to a different country and then they stay in the comfort zone eating their local food, you know? I mean, yeah. that's kind of boring for exactly. me. I want to experience the culture which is also the food is part of the culture you know absolutely so, that's very true i mean i wouldn't probably i would probably be stay away from all these um places they're not very hygienic you know so i'm always looking out for places where mm. i'm gonna eat and see how it looks like before i try okay but even if it if the food doesn't look like our standards i would still try it yeah and then because there's a lot of food in thailand especially i would never eat in germany but since I've tried it, it's amazing. Exactly. Because you know, so we new. in our culture, we eat with our eyes. Mm. So our food looks good, yeah. but it not always tastes good. Okay. Here it's more the opposite, I think. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you see like a stew, it, it, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't look that necessarily look you know, that but great. But once you yeah. try it, or you know, it's like amazing. a curry, mm. it's really nice. What's the favorite thing that you've tried so far? Um, malai boti. It's very good. It's yeah. Lean chicken. It's really nice. I've tried. Um, Obviously, the chicken biryani is, yeah, uh, you know, really you can nice. always eat that. Uh, different kinds of breads, mm -hmm. I really like. Yeah. Yeah. So where are you actually from in Germany? I'm from Düsseldorf, okay. which is um, Cologne near, near Frankfurt. Uh huh. Yes. That's where you grew up? Yeah. What, so I grew up, like? studied there, went to school pretty much all my life until I was 21. What is it? Is it a big city or like a it's smaller um, town? So from where I'm from is a kind of smaller town. It's like 50,000 people population. Mm -hmm. So everyone knows everyone. Yeah. And yeah, but... Is it in the south or...? It's on the Dutch border. Ah. Very close, like 20 minute drive. So then it's like north, actually. Uh, like northwest. Yeah. Yes. Okay, very nice. Yeah. Can you ever imagine moving back to Germany after um, all your travels? So far not. No. no. I would rather go back to Australia. Uh huh. But at the moment I'm traveling so much, you know, I would like to rather go to a new country than going back to an old one. So That's kind of like the experience that keeps you going, is it? Exactly. So it's always like, uh, I want to go somewhere new rather than going back to old things. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Do you have a plan in your mind like where you want to go after Pakistan? Um, I want to go back to Philippines, mm. do some island hopping, yeah. get some fresh sun. Absolutely. And then I want to go to India, make some videos in India. Is there anything um, in Germany that you um, feel particularly proud of? Like anything that you would recommend, let's say, Pakistanis to visit or see in Germany? In Germany? Mm. Um, I mean, the culture is amazing the south bavaria is very awesome we are yeah, right at austria and switzerland so we do have really good uh, mountains as well mm. good for hiking yeah so if people like hunza they would love switzerland you know and um 
yeah, in general, the South has a lot to offer Absolutely. if you're more into nature. Yeah. So. Germany is always a fun country to travel. Yeah, with, I think. and if you want to very happening place. go <laughs> to big cities, you can go Hamburg or Berlin. Berlin, yeah. So there's exactly. a lot you can visit. It's always easy to travel in Europe. You know the flight. People are, would be surprised how cheap the flights are in Europe. Yeah, exactly. Like I was flying for five euro last time mm. for four ninety nine. Oh wow! It's interesting how you said that everything is moving online these days. I mean. In the West, not that many people watch TV. At least people our age don't watch TV that much. Yeah. Maybe the older generation still does. But do you think that's also one of the reasons why travel bloggers are becoming so popular, or, or vloggers? Yeah, I, I, I think it's a big reason. Um, a lot of people just watch me because they don't have the opportunity to travel. Oh. And so they kind of like see the world through my eyes. Oh, that's very interesting. That's what they've told you? Yeah, and that's what, what people follow vloggers. And you know, like there's a lot of daily vloggers in the US. So people, it's kind of a habit for them. You know, they wake up, they watch the vlog. Really? You know, it's it's a kind of habit. So fascinating. This kind of travel content is showing people places they have would never go to. Really? Because I, I kind of had this idea that people would watch uh, travel vlogs because they're maybe themselves thinking of going there, like for ideas, like oh, how is that place? But no. Yeah, and so if someone follows me and then I'm going to a different country, mm. they would probably never seen this country without following me. Exactly. You know, so this is how I got to Pakistan pretty much. Yeah. I was following my friend, he made videos over here. I really found it interesting. But myself, I wasn't thinking of coming here. Yeah, you would never have come here, right? Exactly. And so this is what I pretty much do as well. I follow some of my friends who travel to different places and I'm like, wow, this looks really awesome. Maybe I should have planned a trip there. Mm. So I'm pretty much like influencing people like through my experience to come here as well. Exactly. And this is what I really like. What would you say to, let's say, Westerners who are like kind of curious to come to Pakistan, but maybe still a little bit afraid? I would say it's a super safe country. There's absolutely no worries. I can go out at night by myself. I can take an Uber. It's very modernized. Mm. Obviously the big cities, they're lacking in hygiene. Yeah. There could be still, there's much potential, but uh, they have uh, Uber, Food Panda. It's really easy to live here. Mm, exactly. And it's really easy to communicate, you know, so I, don't think there should be any problem of anyone coming here. Mm, and now, especially since they've made the visa um, regulations exactly. much easier. Did, yeah. Was it easy for you to get a visa? Did you? Get it is easy. You can just do it online. Yeah, you, you did that. Yeah, you can do that. Otherwise, you can go to your embassy, mm. get a visa from there. It will be directly in your passport. You just arrive here, and um, yeah. And another good thing about this country, it's really cheap, very affordable. Yeah. Exactly. So, if you don't have a big budget, then exactly. it's so very it's inexpensive easy. for people to come here. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do. If you go to another country, you kind of like Australia, for example, you kind of have to watch your money more. Yeah. Well, here you can do so many things during the day, mm. which is gonna make your stay more comfortable, you know? Yeah. Talking about a lot of things to do, you got to actually attend a five-day wedding here, right? How was yes. that? So that was actually, I was about to leave Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I was in my last week of my visa yeah. and then I met Shavir like I mentioned and he took me on the, we had coffee and we just got a takeaway and he's like, I got to take you somewhere. Uh -huh. So he took me to his friend's wedding dance practice. Yeah. And then they invited great. me. So it was like on a five day wedding. I got a full outfit for Amazing. each day. And what was, were you wearing? Did you wear like a Sharwani or a Shalwar Kameez only? Uh, probably both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the names. <laughs> but so Sharwani is like the coat type of a thing that you have to kind of button up like a little bit fancier. And yes, I think for one event I wore this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, it's very impressive how much energy on these weddings. You I know, know. It's, it's very and they just go awful. on and on and on. <laughs> and our countries are just uh, stand in one front day. of the, put the ring on and go home and they celebrate with laugh, with dance. And it's really awesome. Like, yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, the Mehendi especially, where yes. with all the dancing yes. and all of that, that's incredible. I'm not a good Pakistani dancer. No, you're not? I found that out. But I... <laughs> I'm sure you did, did fine. some background dance. <laughs> you did? Yeah. How many dances were you in? Uh, one. One, okay. The freestyle part. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> See, I've actually gotten to like do the dances as well now. <laughs> 
So yeah. A little bit embarrassing, but whatever. <laughs> so it was so much fun, mm -hmm. and I learned a lot. And uh, yeah, it's interesting how. These weddings are so much more fun than our kind of weddings. Exactly, and so many guests and so much money and planning goes yeah, into it. Lot, it's incredible. And it was amazing. And I have some of my friends who've done probably 20 weddings a year. I'm right? like, how do you guys do I that? Know. I was exhausted That's, after that. I know, it's like you do this for like even a week and you're just like, okay, I don't know how you people. I was <laughs> really exhausted. To. I needed a break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we're not even the ones getting married. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But there's more eyes on me than on the groom sometimes. Sometimes, like, yeah. I, I was the only foreigner as well. Ah, um, and that so, would do it, yeah. Yeah, but it was lots of fun. <laughs> okay, how did you like it? Very good, actually. Yeah? I've never tried it, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Tasted good. So, it's almost time for our rapid fire round. All right. Are you ready to do it? Okay, let's do it. Okay. Let's see. Shalwar kameez or jeans? Jeans. Multan or Peshawar? Multan. Golgappe or Halwa Puri? Golgappe. Okay, do you know what they are? Yes, I've tried okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Um, Koh Samui or Hunza? Koh Samui. India or Pakistan? Pakistan. Yay! <laughs> Anarkali Bazaar or Kissa Khwani Bazaar? Kissa Khwani. Um, Bachahi Mosque or Eidgam Masjid? I haven't been to the second one, but I Oh, must. yeah? Okay. But I like that a lot, so... Yeah? Yes. <laughs> um, Pakistani or Western weddings? Pakistani weddings. Yeah, For I sure. choose the same, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Lassi or Chai? Chai. Okay. The best thing about Pakistan? The people. I agree. Great. Perfect. Okay, then it's time for you to sign our visitor's book. Oh, okay. Let me just open it for you. Here we go. Sounds good. So right you up. can write your name and your comments. Sounds good. Just here? Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's see. Okay, let's see what you wrote. Was an awesome experience to be on your show. I can't wait to show the world more of this beautiful country. Like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. Thank I you. Had a wonderful afternoon. Me too. Thank you so much. I hope you continue to enjoy your experience in Pakistan. I hope I will. Thank you. I'm sure I will. Thank you. That's it for today. Please join me again next week and don't forget to follow us on our social media handles at indus.news. Goodbye. <laughs>